with Consequence of Sound and we're at Riptide Festival in beautiful Fort Lauderdale, Florida with Barnes Courtney. Hello. How are you? Sweaty. It is really hot out here. It's getting cooler. Sweating up an absolute storm. Oh no, is it gonna rain? It's raining already. It's my already gigs raining. have a splash zone. If you'd been out there, you would be soaking too, just for my own bodily sweats. Wow. Speaking of your gig, we were all eavesdropping. I know Andre, our amazing camera human, got to check out your set. and was, He is a human. He is a human. <laughs> fact loved it how did you feel out there i had a great time yeah. i had the most challenging stage sound possibly really? of my entire career why was that I mean, it's part of the challenge i would love to make a short video mm. showing first person mm. what it's like as an artist to come out in front of ten thousand people with really shitty stage sound because it was nothing but guitar mm -hmm. and a smidgen of vocal and drums <laughs> and i was like no you know what's funny? As audience members and, and fans, we don't realize that. No. So when that happens and you're like, you kind of know what's going on and we don't, we're like, what's going on on this stage? What's happening with this set? And it's my job yeah. to make it look like everything's all, exactly. all good. <laughs> That's stressful. Oh my God. But uh, you handled it well because everybody was raging about how great this set was. It was super fun and I yeah. stuck my, my mic swing dismount. Yeah. What? Uh, uh. Oh. Nailed it! Wow. <laughs> Suck on wow. that, people at home. We're gonna make that into a gift. <laughs> Ain't nothing. <laughs> Speaking of your set, love the track 99. Thank so you. fun. So here's what happens when I listen to 99. I'm dancing and I'm bopping around and I'm like, this is so fun. And then I listen to the lyrics and I'm like, this song's kind of sad. Yes, no one picks up on that. I, it's a sad song. Where were you at when you were writing that song? It's like nostalgic, but it's kind of like, oh man, things sure have changed. <laughs> oh man, oh, nobody man. loves me anymore. <laughs> what woman would love this? Yeah, I got, it gets dark. It gets dark. Yeah. Um, I was very used to yeah. writing all of my records from a place of depression. Yeah. Um, because I was very sad and full of anxiety and bitterness on my first record. I'd been dropped from my first record deal. Yeah. I put everything I had into it, three years of hard work, and, uh, and I'd been working at music for about 10 years by the time I got dropped. Yeah. From like a super young age, my early teens. That's a long time. Being in bands. Yeah. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. You know, I went from this record deal and everything to no job, no money, sofa surfing. Yeah. And I was so used to relying on that well of, uh, terrible, terrible depression to use as a catalyst for my writing, that when it came to writing the second album, I felt a bit out of sorts. Yeah. And I had to try and find new inspiration. And I convinced the record label to spend all of their money on a chateau in Carmel. A chateau, all right, now like, we're I can't getting write the second album with a no. chateau. You can't write it without a chateau. <laughs> it's my second album. Yeah. It's going to be like the Rolling Stones. Yeah, Didn't fair. write a thing. Oh. Spent the entire demo budget. Bad choice on the chateau. Had to go to my... A uh, longtime collaborator who I've been working with since I was 14, yeah. to his parents' house uh, because his place got noise complaints. Oh, wow. And he had a soundproof room from when he was a kid and used to oh, record in there. Fantastic. Really subscribe to that David Bowie idea that your surroundings heavily influence your music. That's fantastic. And I was in this room that I used to write in when I was a teenager with this guy, and all this stuff about the transition from childhood into adulthood started coming out. Cool. And I found a lot of remorse and sadness in nostalgia, and that is where I based the subject matter for the whole 404 for the whole record. Album. But I feel particularly as though 99 was the most truthful expression of that yeah. that I was able to get out. That's fantastic. Speaking like, geez, of 404. Jeez, that's a weird answer, Brian. It's <laughs> your old life story. You win. That was a fantastic answer. So 404, great album title. Love the idea of it connecting to getting on the internet and like not having a page to go to. Where did that idea come from? Like, what was it? Like, what's the symbolic behind the 404 title? I suppose because the album is about the trials and tribulations of becoming an adult and losing your authentic self as you age, yeah. um, searching for memories and feelings, parts of yourself that disappeared in the moment. Uh, I thought a good metaphor for that was a 404 error, which is when a computer searches for a page that no longer exists. Um, 
And being a child of the yeah. digital age in the 90s, when it's the relatable. internet was beginning, yeah. it felt like a nice uh, sort of union. Cool. Also, I got really baked yeah. <laughs> so that I could think outside No, I thought you were going to say that in the beginning, but I was like, I'll wait for him to admit that he was also very baked I didn't think that was a tactic because it doesn't help me write music. I mean, but it helps you with titles and that's important. Apparently, yeah. yeah. So speaking of songs, I know that fans like kind of go off. I saw your Webster Hall show. So like when like Golden Daddy Line comes out, like people just like flip out. Which is bizarre. W is that bizarre to you? You know, it's, it's been- Let's dig in. It's been Why incredibly is that difficult for me to get the records yeah. uh, the way that I want them because yeah. I'm a guy who comes from bands. I'm a solo artist now. I, I don't produce physically. I have to stand there and tell people what I want. So I think that song and a lot of other songs, they never quite came out how I imagined them. Right. But when we play live, I've had the opportunity to fine tune and fine tune. Yeah. And now it sounds like a guitar song. It's like a rock and roll it song. It does. So I think online, the initial reaction, um, I was like, oh, is it is it taking off? Are people connecting to it? Yeah. But I think when they see it live, it just feels so much more like me yeah. and like what I'm trying to get across. 